Okay, so my name is Katie and I am the program coordinator for our university studies program. And one of my key programs that I manage um, is our community-based Bachelor of Education partnership. So that is our partnership with the University of Calgary. And the reason it's community-based is because uh, our students don't actually have to leave their home communities to study. So as you may already know, our courses at Northern Lakes are all online. And so you can attend from, from anywhere really. And then the University of Calgary's community-based Bachelor of Education courses are also online for the most part, but we'll get to that. So it's a really great opportunity for folks like us who live in Northern Alberta or other parts of the province or the country and cannot relocate to uh, a major center to take their undergraduate degree. Um, and so you mentioned that you're in Slave Lake and I am based in Alberta, but right on the BC border. So near to Spirit River, um, but closest to Dawson Creek, um, that area. So I am I am a community, uh, a rural community member as well. Okay, so I'm going to give you just a little bit of information about what it's like to be a teacher. Um, some folks come to this and they have, you know, cousins and aunts and parents who are educators, so they have a ton of information. And some folks, all they know about teaching is that they had teachers and it seems like a good, uh, a good job. So where would you say um, you fall in that, that category, Kiwitino? Would you say that you're, um, you already know quite a bit about the profession or you're just kind of thinking about it and, and need to know more? Okay, awesome. Your dad was a teacher. Nice. Right on. <clears throat> yeah, it seems to be one of those things. My mom was a teacher. My aunt was a teacher. Both of my grandmothers were teachers. So I've come from a long line of teachers. Um, and I think for that reason, I think teaching is probably one of the best jobs in the whole world. I might be a little bit biased. Um, but I do think it's more of a, a craft or a passion um, even than just a, a profession. So it's very much something that um, I think it, it's a part of, of who we are as people. Okay, so just some, uh, a little bit of background information about teaching. Um, and our program that we uh, offer in partnership with the University of Calgary is really great because it is actually considered a K to 12 degree. So Oftentimes, if you were to attend on campus, say University of Calgary, University of Alberta, you would be asked to either choose elementary or secondary. So you could be an elementary school teacher or high school teacher, but typically your degree isn't for both. Um, but the community-based partnership recognizes that folks are um, in rural communities and very often we'll be working at schools that are smaller schools they might have trouble recruiting and so <clears throat> this program is meant to give teachers who are kind of ready to um, teach in all uh, all grade levels uh, so that's kind of an interesting difference about this program so high school teachers are in pretty good demand <clears throat> um, you make about so the average salary according to the Alberta government is um, $78,700 a year. And that includes things like pension and benefits and um, a sick leave, a disability, those sorts of things. So it's got, it tends to be a, a pretty good job. And then of course, as you know, you get those, um, the two months off and the time at Christmas and spring break. Um, <clears throat> what a lot of people think when they hear about teaching, they're like, oh, I'm going to have summers off. I'm going to work 8.30 to 3.30. It's going to be great. Um, but I don't want folks to come into the first couple years for sure thinking that it is going to be such a walk in the park because you do spend a lot of time prepping and marking, especially in those first couple of years while you're getting the hang of things. Um, so yes, it does have great holidays, um, but you do have to be prepared to work pretty hard for the first couple of years for sure. 
Um, so the average wage is about $50 an hour and it typically takes a four year degree, um, uh, an undergraduate degree to become a teacher. And it is uh, in medium demand, but in the north, of course, um, we are almost always short staffed. Um, I know my kids school right now, they are looking for uh, perpetually looking for substitute teachers. Um, because we just don't have the people to fill it so oftentimes we'll even have um, parents come in and just act as classroom supervisors because we can't find substitute teachers and subbing is a great way to get your foot in the door and it pays quite well as well so typically um, a day for a substitute would be and this was a few years ago when i was subbing but approximately 200 225 230 dollars a day so it's decent money um, for uh, for just something to kind of get your foot in the door as well. So uh, there were <coughs> about 76% of employers who recruited in the last two years. And again, that is um, probably skewed if you're looking at the Edmonton, Calgary, um, those school divisions. If you look further north, um, you would probably see that they're constantly recruiting in, in most divisions in the north. And then this is your salary range. So starting at about $36 an hour all the way up to about $65 an hour. Um, if you really want to know what you would get paid at a specific school division, their collective agreements are typically available online. So you can go on to the collective agreement and you can, they have, it's called the salary grid. So it'll have the years of teaching experience on the, in the rows, and then in the column will be your degree or vice versa. So you'll have a four year degree with one year of experience, and you'll be at this, and it moves all the way down to the bottom quadrant. Um, and so your top paid teachers would be folks who've been there for 10 or 11 years and have probably six years of education. So that's kind of how that salary um, shakes out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any questions so far about the secondary teachers? Okay, perfect. All right, so uh, we talked a little bit about the working conditions um, that they have. Teachers typically work August to July, um, <clears throat> but uh, that's because um, you, you come back kind of the week, week and a half before school starts. And I know my mom used to go in and get her classroom ready a couple weeks in advance, or she'd go in over the summer and paint something or decorate something. <coughs> so there are, um, it's not always the full summer off, but it, it is still that break. Um, and then this idea here as well of um, staying late to plan lessons, grade assignments, or run extracurricular activities. If you are the new person on staff, there will probably be even greater demands on your time to uh, perform those extracurricular activities for the kids. I know my first teaching job here in Canada, I was the volleyball coach and the cross country supervisor. And I believe I volunteered with basketball as well, just to be the, the teacher on site. And then I also led a school trip to Costa Rica. So there were a lot of things happening outside of my teaching responsibilities. <clears throat> um, so it is rewarding, but it is physically and emotionally demanding. So you do have to take really good care of yourself while you are um, working in your classroom, just so that we uh, can protect ourselves against things like burnout and that sort of thing. So some of the career options that you might have if you are trained as a secondary teacher are public and separate schools. Um, so that would be <coughs> Um, perhaps a Catholic school division, if there was one, um, private school. So there are some really interesting options there. Um, you could, for example, work in an Islamic school in Edmonton. There is a Waldorf school in Calgary. <coughs> or what I did um, for a couple of years is work overseas. So when you have a Canadian education degree, a Canadian teaching certificate, you're, uh, it's pretty easy for you to find a job. Um, 
anywhere in the world really. So I taught in England and I taught in Taiwan and both of those were formal teaching roles within a public school and so I got paid a public teacher salary and got to work with colleagues from all over the world. Um, so definitely a very cool experience there. Um, you may work in hospitals or um, in vocational schools and colleges. So for example, Northern Lakes, we have our academic upgrading program. A lot of colleges have something like that. And so there may be an opportunity there if you wanna work with, um, with adults. You can also maybe work in a not-for-profit organization. So one of my jobs for a while was working in our local literacy center. So I taught English as a second language, and then I also taught um, literacy skills. So that's um, for folks who probably graduated um, or maybe didn't quite graduate, um, and they are at various uh, skill levels with their reading and, and writing and math and, and social studies. So that's an option as well. Um, you could be a department head or coordinator of a particular subject. So you may end up being, say, like the social studies curriculum coordinator. Um, you may work in the department of ed, um, university or within a school district, um, or you could move up into administration. So there are tons of options, and those are just a few. So I know for me, with my ed degree and being up north, it's opened an awful lot of doors for me. Um, and so I've had a lot of uh, a wide range of, of positions <clears throat> that weren't even always all related to teaching, but I got them because I had that, that background. Because if you're teaching, it shows that you can plan, you can organize, you can manage your time. Right? You can solve conflict, you can work with people, so a variety of skills that come with it. <clears throat> okay, so the next one is an elementary school teacher, which you can see here is interesting, about 77,000, so just slightly, uh, paid slightly less. Um, and that's not because you make any less on the salary grid. Where I am guessing that comes from, and this is a guess that I'd have to look up, um, is that more women are elementary teachers than men and more uh, there you'll see more men in, in high school and secondary school um, and so women take those years off for mat leave and that bumps them down on the grid so or they might work part-time which would also impact their their seniority and their wages so you don't actually get paid any less typically um, within your collective agreement it's just that that salary grid might influence this number here. That's my guess. Um, so again, you'll need to have that uh, four-year degree and approximately 40, just about 44,000 elementary school teachers in the province of Alberta with a medium occupational demand. And so here you can see slightly less uh, in terms of recruitment, um, but again, I think that data is skewed and you would find that it is different in the north with Northern employers, again, actively recruiting more frequently than the bigger centers. Um, and then it is, uh, the wages here you can see goes up to $59. Um, and again, that's in all likelihood due to that grid. Okay, so career options as an elementary school educator, similar. Um, you can work at a, a playground or some sort of a childcare center. Um, you can work in public or private schools, hospitals, and other institutions. Um, and then kind of those administrative pieces within the school or the school system or in the government as well. So there are consulting opportunities and that sort of thing. As an example, one of my previous bosses, she is currently working for the school district that I worked at. So she's an elementary teacher and then she retired and then she took a consulting job. So she works in special education and goes to the different schools and supports their resource staff, um, their special education teachers in their implementation and development of IEPs. So that's kind of a cool gig. You get to travel around and she's still receiving a pension, right? So kind of a neat, neat opportunity. And then um, my brother's brother-in-law's mom was uh, big in the union. Um, so she went from the public school system into the union environment. So lots of really cool trajectories that you can take. <coughs> okay, questions about that?
Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to tell you all about how you can start your career with us at MLC. So, what it normally looks like is that students spend two years with Northern Lakes College, um, and with us, you will do things called your um, your teachables and your non-education courses. So those are courses that do not have the code EDUC. So that would be things like English, you have to take an English, a math or a science, health education, a psychology option, Canadian studies, then you have eight teachables and five electives. So you do those two years with us, and then you go on to the University of Calgary for an additional two years. And again, like I said, you can stay in your community for almost that entire time with the exception of three two-week summer institutes at the University of Calgary. So you go there for approximately two, two and a half weeks in July for the first, second, and third years that you're with them. Um, so that's their face-to-face -face component. So you would have to plan for that, but otherwise you can do it all from home. Um, to get into university studies, you have to meet the English language requirement or the English, um, sorry, the English um, requirement in terms of high school. So you need to have an English 30-2 at a 70% or an English 30-1 at a 60% or equivalent. Um, once you get into the program, depending on the stream that you select or the teachable, you might have additional requirements. So there may be additional math, science, social studies, or English requirements um, that we'd have to look at. So some of the courses that you can take are here, and I've embedded them underneath some of the streams. So we offer six streams in partnership with the University of Calgary. So the first three shown here are the English stream, social studies, and revitalization of Indigenous languages. So you can see some of the courses here. We've got a wide variety um, within uh, within these streams in particular. Um, these are our oldest and best developed streams. So we've got um, nine different English courses you can take and we're adding more next year. And then in the social studies stream, we have a variety of courses you can take. You have to take a mixture of history, um, psychology, and, uh, and political science, and you have to take this human geography course as well. Um, and then within the revitalization of Indigenous languages stream, um, these are, it's a little bit more structured um, because you do have to take the Aboriginal uh, or the Indigenous language. So we offer Cree, um, there's Cree 1 and Cree 2. Um, so that's uh, a really cool option that we, we just started offering last year. And then we have introduction to Aboriginal issues and a couple of other Indigenous studies courses and then the Canadian politics course as well. So those are just some of the courses that you take within these teachable streams. You could also take them as electives if you're interested in them. Then our three other streams are math, science, and early, I should double check, I, I think I might have made a typo, I think it might actually be early childhood and not early learning. So the early learning is the only one um, that is specifically focused on the K to three pathway. Um, so that one does require a few additional courses at the University of Calgary, um, but it is a, a, real, a really interesting mixture of courses. Um, up until that point, you take a variety of English and math and science, as well as psychology. So kind of a, a, a different type of, um, found, of teachable course there. Within math, we offer a variety of math courses, including statistics, algebra, calculus, and math appreciation, which is kind of like a survey course of different, um, different uh, types of math. And then in the sciences stream, we have quite a few biology courses, and we are in the process of developing additional courses there as well. Um, do you know what you might want to teach? Have you thought, have you thought about that yet, or are you just kind of getting some info? Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so 
Our program is a partnership, which I have, I've said it a few times, I know. Um, so we work really closely with the University of Calgary and I have two folks in their office that give me a ton of information and I communicate back and forth with them. We talk probably just about every week. So our communication with the University of Calgary is pretty strong um, and our folks are excellent and they're super helpful. And they will actually come next year and give uh, an information session directly from the University of Calgary. So you can get more information from them as well once you enter the program. So the CBBE or Community Based Bachelor of Education is hosted through the Workland School of Education and it is a four year program and it is unique in Alberta. So it's the only program in Alberta that allows students to stay in their home communities like this um, with this partnership with us. Um, it's ideal for folks in rural and remote communities. Um, again, because of that, not having to travel other than those two, uh, those three two week summer sessions. And then we have blended learning. <coughs> so our program, like I mentioned, is 100% online and our sessions are all recorded. So if you have um, a part time job and you can't make it to your English class, you can come home after work and the recording will be there in your class and you can watch the recording and do your schoolwork in the evening. So it's really nice that way for folks who want that, you know, they want that face-to-face -face sort of uh, opportunity, they can attend those live classes. But if you're really trying to juggle a bunch of responsibilities, you can watch the courses after, um, like in the evenings or on the weekends. Um, the University of Calgary is very similar in their delivery. So all of their programs are online as well. Um, with that two weeks in the summer exception. And then about four times a semester, they will have a live session, but it's about 4.30 in the, in the afternoon. So they make it very um, flexible so that it can accommodate those schedules because a lot of folks um, that are in this program have other commitments like family and, and employment. Um, the Summer Institute um, at the UFC does allow students that opportunity to connect um, and then it is designed to allow students to continue working while studying. So we do have some folks who they get um, student loans or they get funding and they will attend university full time and they'll commit to university as their um, their full time gig. But we also have a lot of folks who will take um, they'll work a part time job and they'll come to um, us or a full-time job and take a couple courses. So we're used to accommodating a variety of different uh, learning styles and uh, lifestyle challenges. This is, this slide didn't copy very well, unfortunately, but this is our current fees. Um, they may change. Um, fees are actually subject to change every academic year. So what you see here may not be the tuition you would pay in the fall and it most likely won't be the tuition you're paying at the end of your program. Um, so if you were to take a full-time course load, which is 12 credits or four courses, your tuition for that semester would be $1,736. So still very, very affordable. Um, when you look at university courses, they're typically just about double. So in the neighborhood of about $700 per course as opposed to about 400. Um, so it's, it is quite a good savings and the quality is, uh, it's excellent. Our instructors are fantastic. Um, and you do have access to your instructors. So even if you can't attend the classes, you can still book sessions with them. Like if you want to have a meeting, you can hang out with them. Um, you can also, um, connect with our tutor if you need additional support and our faculty are available by email or by phone. So this is just a quote from one of our former students, um, actually still a current student. I believe next year will be their last year. They're coming back and forth between University of Calgary and us. Um, and so she said that um, the partnership between NLC and UFC enables individuals who are not able to commit to campus life or full time in class lectures like myself the opportunity to engage in the required courses um, to still complete my lifelong goal of becoming a teacher, a goal I thought was out of reach due to family and other commitments that I was unable to sacrifice. So 
that is, I think that quote really represents the needs of our students and who our students are, um, because we do, uh, we try to be really flexible and uh, make sure that we, we know that you have um, other commitments. And so we wanna help you get the best balance possible. So if you have more questions or you wanna to talk to me more about it, you can always give me a call or an email or check our website. Uh, we have four minutes left right now if you still have anything that you wanna ask. Um, and don't forget that if you were interested in coming, we can get you started in the spring term and the application today is free. So you can pop over to that and uh, submit an application for university studies for the spring term. And you can also enter a draw. So there's some cool draws that you can enter as well. Any questions? Sorry, I talk a lot and I know that's a ton of information. No questions. Okay, so what are you thinking? Uh, does, this, does this sound like something that might um, that might be interesting, or you're just gonna check out your other options? Perfect. Um, well, I'm gonna just stop recording here, and we can.